What do you really know of the Kennedy family and the tragedies they faced? Plane crashes, assassinations, mental health, deaths at war? Is the Kennedy curse real? Keep watching to find out more. Perhaps the first known tragedy of the Kennedy family took place all the way back in 1941. Obviously, things were different then, and so when Rosemary Kennedy's family noticed that she was having what were described as intellectual disabilities, they sought a solution. According to the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum, she was becoming very irritable and difficult at age 22, so her family decided to have her operated on via lobotomy. The operation was meant to calm Rosemary and help her, but it was a failed attempt. While Rosemary didn't die immediately following the surgery, it did render her unable to care for herself, and she was resigned to live in a home where others could care for her. In fact, Rosemary lived at the St. Coletta School for Exceptional Children for the rest of her life until she died in 2005, when she was 86 years old. While Rosemary didn't die as young as many other members of the Kennedy family did, her life was completely changed for the worse when she underwent that experimental surgery. When it comes to the Kennedy family, there's really no denying the fact that they're all high achievers. And with Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., the eldest son of Joseph and Rose Kennedy, and John F. Kennedy's older brother, that was certainly the case. He graduated from Harvard University in 1938 and was well on his way to graduating from Harvard Law School before volunteering for the Navy in 1941, according to the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum. But unfortunately, entering into the Navy would be the thing that took Joseph's life. During World War II, Joseph was a Navy pilot, and in August 1944, he was killed. The tragedy occurred during a bombing mission near the coast of Normandy, France, when explosives in his aircraft reportedly went off prematurely, per History.com. When he died, he was only 29 years old. To say that Kathleen Kennedy's life was eventful would be an understatement. The sister of John F. Kennedy and the Kennedy family member with the cutest nickname, Kick experienced quite a lot in her short life. According to the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum, Kathleen was a debutante, a Red Cross volunteer, and even a research assistant for the Times-Herald newspaper. Additionally, Kathleen even married William Billy Cavendish, the Marquess of Hartington, in May 1944, making her quite literally a lady. Lady Hartington, to be exact. Unfortunately, she experienced tragedy when her husband died in combat in September 1944, the same year they married, making her a widow at only 24 years old. But that's not where the tragedy ends with Lady Hardington. Sadly, she died on May 13, 1948 in a small plane crash in France, along with three others. Just four years after her brother Joseph P. Kennedy died, so too did Kick at 28 years old. In one of the most notable moments in American political history, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in 1963. When Walter Cronkite delivered the news to the nation, the famed newscaster began to tear up. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. On November 22, 1963, President Kennedy was shot while being driven through Dallas, Texas as part of his campaign for re-election, and was pronounced dead shortly afterwards. His assailant, Lee Harvey Oswald, was also shot and killed after being arrested. While conspiracies have reigned supreme since Kennedy's assassination, investigative journalist Gerald Posner told Frontline that Oswald simply hated the United States. Posner said, He despised America. He despised capitalism. When he eventually had the opportunity to strike against Kennedy, it was that symbol of the system that he was going after. Despite the chaotic political challenges the assassination would introduce, the tragedy that Jacqueline Kennedy had to deal with was heartbreaking and was just one in a long line of family misfortune. As if the Kennedy family hadn't struggled enough following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Edward M. Kennedy, also known as Ted, was in a deadly plane crash in 1964, but somehow managed to survive. According to ABC News, in June 1964, when Ted was 32 years old, he was in a small plane crash while campaigning for his Senate seat in Massachusetts. The crash killed two and landed Ted Kennedy in the hospital for five long months. 
During those five long months, he focused on the kind of senator he wanted to be, saying in a 1965 interview with Good Housekeeping, I tried to put my hours to good use. I had a lot of time to think about what was important and what was not and about what I wanted to do with my life. I think I gained something from those six months that will be valuable the rest of my life. The assassination of President John F. Kennedy is obviously well known in United States history. However, many people might be surprised to learn that his brother, Robert F. Kennedy, known as Bobby Kennedy, was also assassinated just five years after the president, in 1968. Robert was shot at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles, after giving a victory speech for winning the California presidential primary, according to History.com. Sirhan Sirhan was the man convicted of shooting Robert, and he was quickly tackled and arrested for the crime, which he confessed to during his trial. To say that Robert Kennedy's death was the most shocking thing to happen in 1968 would be a lie, though. Just two months earlier, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, and the nation was still grieving, as noted by CNN. So for Robert to then be killed when the nation was so hopeful that his presidency could turn things around wasn't easy for many Americans. Perhaps one of the most infamous tragedies surrounding the Kennedy family only goes by one name, Chappaquiddick. The island off of Martha's Vineyard was where Ted Kennedy crashed his car in July 1969, the vehicle careening over a bridge and landing upside down in a pond, according to History.com. The crash left one female passenger, Mary Jo Kopechny, one of Robert Kennedy's campaign workers, dead. But that wasn't where the scandal or tragedy ended. Instead, the focus then shifted onto Ted's behavior after the crash. Instead of immediately calling police or rescue workers to try and find Kopechny or her body, Ted, who claimed he dove into the water to look for Kopechny and sought additional help from his cousin and aide, ultimately returned to his hotel where he went to sleep, only to report the accident the next morning. Obviously, that didn't sit well with people, and History.com even went so far as to claim it was the reason Ted would never become president. I pray that I can have the courage to make the right decision. Another horrible Kennedy family accident took place in 1999, when a plane crash claimed the lives of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife Carolyn Bassett Kennedy, and her sister Lauren Bassett. On July 16, 1999, John, or John John as he was lovingly known, was piloting a single-engine plane just off the coast of Martha's Vineyard when it began to rapidly plummet and eventually crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, per History.com. It wasn't until July 21st that the remains of all of those on board were found, and it was declared that John simply had become confused flying in the dark when the plane crashed. As those familiar with the Kennedy curse know, multiple members of the famous family have been taken from the world at too young an age. In 2011, Kara Kennedy, the oldest daughter of Ted Kennedy, died from a heart attack at the age of 51. Kara's brother Patrick Kennedy told publications at the time simply, her heart gave out, she's with dad. Kara had previously undergone surgery for lung cancer in 2003. After receiving the jarring diagnosis the year before and the procedure had been successful, Kara, who'd also had chemotherapy treatments, appeared to be healthy ever since. Her mother, Joan Kennedy, even said as much, telling Politico, She was very healthy. That's why this is such a shock. Kara's passing was obviously difficult for the Kennedy family to work through, as it was so unexpected, and it had truly seemed like the so-called Kennedy family curse had been lifted before her death. Unfortunately, tragedy continued to occur in the famous family, and it didn't end with Kara. In 2019, Saoirse Kennedy Hill, one of Robert F. Kennedy's granddaughters, sadly died at the family's Cape Cod home at the young age of 22. According to USA Today, a toxicology report confirmed that Saoirse had consumed a combination of methadone, ethanol, and several prescription drugs, which resulted in an accidental overdose. Though Saoirse's death was ruled an accident, an essay she wrote for her school's newspaper in 2016 revealed that the young student had long suffered from depression. She wrote, My depression took root in the beginning of my middle school years and will be with me for the rest of my life. Although I was mostly a happy child, I suffered bouts of deep sadness that felt like a heavy boulder on my chest. 
Sersha's death was an especially bitter tragedy for the Kennedy family, who shared a statement after her passing, saying, "...she lit up our lives with her love, her peals of laughter, and her generous spirit." Clearly, Sersha's life was meaningful, and her death caused a lot of grieving. In 2020, Robert F. Kennedy's granddaughter Maeve Kennedy Townsend McKean and her son Gideon drowned in a terrible canoeing accident as reported by USA Today. In April 2020, Gideon and Maeve took a canoe out on Chesapeake Bay, and after the waters turned dangerous, they never returned. Maeve and Gideon were young, at 40 and 8 respectively. In a statement, Maeve's mother, Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, daughter of Robert F. Kennedy, expressed her heartbreak. Via the Washington Post, she shared, "...my heart is crushed, yet we shall try to summon the grace of God and what strength we have to honor the hope, energy, and passion that Maeve and Gideon set forth into the world." When he was only 12 years old, Edward M. Kennedy Jr., the son of Edward M. Kennedy, had his leg amputated above his knee in an attempt to eradicate bone cancer. The news was reported by the New York Times in 1973, which stated that the young Kennedy was scheduled to have the surgery after tests at Georgetown Hospital discovered a cancerous growth. A follow-up article noted that the surgery proved to be successful and that Kennedy Jr. was making a successful recovery. In 1985, a Los Angeles Time article proclaimed Kennedy Jr. to be an example for disabled individuals. The paper stated that Kennedy's brush with the alleged family curse hadn't darkened his outlook on life. Instead, it allowed him the opportunity to show that surgery hadn't stopped him from participating in sports or joining his father in political opportunities. The write-up added that Kennedy Jr. had recently been fitted with a prosthesis. The then 23-year-old happily stated, "...I'm using muscles I haven't used in 10 years. This is a revolutionary idea. The fact is, life doesn't end after you have cancer. It's easier to overcome if you can see other people who have overcome their challenge." I'm obviously motivated to be effective. I, I'm, I'm motivated to work hard. Uh, I know I have a lot to live up to. Kennedy Jr. went on to pursue a successful political career. According to his website, he served as a Connecticut state senator for the 12th District of Connecticut and is a healthcare lawyer, an entrepreneur, and a lifelong advocate for people with disabilities. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357.